Shalom. Call Halimla Yahweh. By Hashem Yahweh Shai. By Hashem Rakon Kadash. All praises be to the Most High Yahweh. In the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad. Double honor and respect to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson. Who is E? Who is E? Well, there's a video I'm going to play, but let me read this disclaimer first. And this video was sent to me by the beloved sister Alma Yasharala. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. Allowance is made for fair use. For purposes such as criticism, comment, news, reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research, fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. So I do not gain any profit or revenue from these videos. It's only a personal opinion and used for comment. Let's continue. Charles come from the Orsini family. Roth means red in German, and the Orsini means red, red bear, little red bears. That's what Orsini means. The grey pope is Pepe Orsini. He trumps the black, he trumps the white pope. The grey pope is grey even pope. higher than the black and the white pope. The Orsini is the, f the Maxima family. They are the maximum family. They are on top. And somehow they've trumped the Colonna and the Farnese, which I know without any doubt through all my studies that they are the three most powerful Illuminati. Where, what what about Rothschild and Rockefeller? Well, they are Orsini. They just changed their name. Rockefeller oh. were Rothschilds. Rothschilds were Orsini. Orsini were a family which have their lines in Babylon and Egypt. They tell you that. You read their biographies. They'll tell you that. We go back to Nimrod. They tell you that. The Rothschilds say that. We go back to Nimrod. How? Through the Orsini. So Rockefeller, Rothschild, Orsini, and then you go back to the Persian and Egyptian dynasties. Rothschilds. So I want to go here real quick. So when you, biblically speaking, their bloodlines go back to the Amalekites, Amalek, biblically speaking. And Amalek is a grandson of Esau. Matter of fact, let's make sure because it's been a while since I read it. <clears throat> I want to make sure. Let's see here. Okay, I'm reading Genesis 36, right here, yep, yes, it's okay, it is correct, Genesis 36 and 9, let's go to 8, thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir, Esau is Edom, telling you that this is a nation of people, a bloodline or seed. And these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites in Mount Seir. These are the names of Esau's sons, Eliphaz, the son of Adah, the wife of Esau, Retuel, the son of Bashamath, the wife of Esau. And the sons of Eliphaz were Teman, Omar, Zepho, Gatim, and Kenaz. And Timna was concubine to Eliphaz, Esau's son. And she bare to Eliphaz Amalek. These were the sons of Adah, Esau's wife. See? So they're the first of the nations. They are the chief ruling right now, which in more secular terminology, the Khazars. 
Now, that word Orsini translates into little bear. They're Amalekites, or what we say Khazars today, but they biblically go back to Amalek, and they're ruling in Russia today, just like the people of the Ukraine. They're Amalekites primarily, but of course you have different nations in there as well. So the bear marks the end of the age of Edom that is going to clash with the Ten Toes, the European Union and NATO. So I just wanted to highlight that. So we read this. Let's go here. So he mentioned the Dukes in the video. So the Dukes go back to the Edomite bloodlines. Genesis 36 and 21. And Deshaun and Azar and Deshaun, these are the dukes of the Horites, the children of Seir in the land of Edom. So Edom took over that land of Mount Seir, which were occupied by Hamites. And that word Horite breaks down into cave dweller. And jump down to verse 42. Let's go here to verse 40. And these are the names of the dukes that came of Esau according to their families after their places by their names. Duke Timna, Duke Alva, Duke Yefef. So they're not done away with. And the Edomites are not descendants of Japheth. They come out of the loins of Shem, but they did not come. They're, they're not of the chosen bloodline. They're Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. But they're Shemitic. Duke Ahalabama, Duke Ahalabama, Duke Allah, Duke Penan, Duke Kenez, Duke Timon. So they're not done away with. Remember, the future prophecy in Jeremiah 49. Duke Magdiel, Duke Edom, these be the dukes of Edom according to their habitations in the land of their possession. He is Esau, the father of the Edomites. And we know that 2 Ezra 6 and 9 says that Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Uh -oh. So death is going to be swallowed up in victory and immortality is going to be pronounced on the earth. The rebirth of Jacob. Let's get this real quick. So how can they be done away with when they're the last ruling age or empire, the revised Roman Empire. Let's get this. Jeremiah 49, verse 8. Flee ye, turn back, dwell deep, O inhabitants of Dedan, for I will bring the calamity of Esau upon him the time that I will visit him. So that time is the end of the age of Edom, transitioning into a new age of Jacob. Let's look at the dawn in the Hebrew. The dawn. When they occupied these territories, and took over these lands, but they're not Cush, okay? It means low country. <clears throat> low country. And when you look at it, the Bible says that he is a base man, and they're occupying the valley of the shadow of death, which is the daughter of Babylon, America. So in the modern term of the word or the modern 
understanding is low-lying area of morality, <clears throat> darkness. So when you read this chapter, it's talking about judgments, future judgments, the return of the Lord. See? Jeremiah 49 and 13. For I have sworn by myself, saith the Lord, that Basra shall become a desolation, a reproach, a waste, and a curse, and all the cities thereof shall be perpetual waste. So this is the future describing the return of the Lord. So they're here. Now in the video, this stood out to me. When you're reading about the Orsini family, it translates into little bear. So they're Amal Amalekites, ultimately. It says, in the 16th century, Count Niccolo Orsini IV, a member of the feudal Orsini family, ruled Pitigliano, an independent fief, whose inhabitants were mainly peasants. Although he was Catholic, he thought Jews mostly bankers and artisans could help to revitalize Pitigliano's lagging economy. So this is where you get the term crypto Jew. Crypto means hidden. And I'm not going to read the article. You have to read this on your own. I will put it in the description box. Crypto Jews, also known as Marano Jews, originated from the Sephardic Jewish community who resided mostly in the Iberian Peninsula, Spain, and Portugal. During the Spanish Inquisition beginning in 1478, the Jews of those countries were forced to convert to Catholicism. So they're hidden under that title or that umbrella. While many of the Sephardic Jews fled the countries, others now identified as crypto Jews were baptized Catholic and followed its practices while practicing Judaism in secret. So Judaism is not the original faith of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So you also have crypto J -O -O -N, that's worshiping under Islam, believe it or not. So many of them are hidden, worshiping under Islam. But I won't read the whole article. I will copy and paste it into the description box. I'll do that. And let's close out. Yeah, we read all that. Okay, let's go ahead and go here. Um, let's see, it's in Psalms 37. Uh, I think it's somewhere around verse 25 or somewhere in there, 35. We'll close out here. So this connects to Job 9 and 24. And the interesting thing, when you look at the Roman Empire, they wore these little um, leaves around there, the little, I put a, did a lesson on it. Let me see here. Let's pull it up, I don't wanna guess. say crown reef let's do that one yeah there it is couldn't remember laurels are traditionally made by weaving and twisting leaves 
from the laurel or bay tree. See that? <clears throat> so this connects to the Roman Empire. And they picked up a lot of traditions from the Greeks. Hence, we get the term Greco-Roman Empire. Greco-Roman Empire. Including wearing a laurel-like that worn by the Greek god Apollo. See, laurels. And that's poisonous. When I looked it up in the past, it's poisonous. So it's describing a wicked rulership. When we go to Psalms 37 and 35. So they wore these laurels, leaves, or bay leaves, connecting right to the wicked or Edom. See, Psalms 37 and 35. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Let's look it up here in the Hebrew. Uh, this bay tree. Bay tree looks like Erak 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 Bay tree. Let's see how much it gives us. No, this is off. And this this is what happens sometimes. The blue letter goes off. But when you're looking up this bay tree or laurels, it's poisonous. Don't do that. Um, yeah, these are some of the images of it. And I remember looking it up in the past. I'm going to go ahead and close out. I didn't want to make this long at all. Laurel leaves. Let's see here. Or it's the bay the bay leaves. It's been a while since I've looked it up. Let's see. Apparently, there's some good medicinal usages for some of them. Okay, here it is right here. It says that the laurel hedge plants produce hydrocyanic acid, which can cause serious complications if ingested. This must have been something similar that I read. Laurel hedge plants can produce a hydrocyanic acid, which can cause serious complications if ingested. And it looks like that's connected to cyanide. And then there's a cherry laurel. Caution poisonous the cherry laurel toxic to cats dogs and other animals has prussic acid not only poisonous for us humans but the consumption of the cherry laurel is also toxic in horses so the context of the scriptures is talking about a wicked that's why it says they there are, um, and when you read Psalms 58, the Spirit just taking me everywhere. 
Psalms 58. See, right here. Psalms 58 and 3. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Immoral. They're not spiritual. They're carnal. And they're prone to idolatry and sin, wickedness. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear. So they're built for transgression, iniquity, wickedness, perverseness, debauchery. It's like the Romans had Roman orgies and they had the catamites, which were boy toys, where they would bring the young boys to the Caesar's palace. And they would have a saying that the women are for marriages, boys are for fun. So the Edomites are in rulership today. The women are used for show. But anyway, I just wanted to go into that and play that short video. And the wanting of how about shimmy how shy for the prophets, for the men of the Lord, for the help, for the remnant, for those that are helping to contribute to the ministry in some shape, form, or fashion. The Wadi Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. Our praises to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. By Shem Rekwakadash Barakadam. See you in the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwam Yashorala. Kwam Yashorala. And the Bad Babal. We got next, Lord willing. Shalom.